and you've got a grab sample there of 27.5%, which is right there on the surface. You can, you can kick it. So that might be a good drill target. Now, that's not the only sample we took there. There are lots of... Talking graphite today with ePower Resources, and we're actually talking about neurology, because of course your project is located to, uh, like we've discussed, uh, focus graphite and mason graphite. But here we have a map James that uh, clearly explains to the viewers at home uh, where your claims are located. Can you perhaps explain what we're looking at? Sure. Um, these rectangular boxes here are mineral claims. And you can see the scale of kilometers there in the upper left of the of the map. So you can see how much ground we're talking about here. Each mineral claim is roughly one kilometer north to south and about 564 meters east to west. And we are the largest or mineral claim holder in this area. And the mineral claims held by ePower are the ones outlined in dark gray or in red over here on the, on the left. So you can see we've got a big land position in what is the highest grade known graphite district in North America. Now, one of the reasons graphite is so important to batteries is it's extremely conductive of electricity and also extremely heat resistant. But the conductivity is one of the things that helps us find it. So if you look at this aerial survey, this is done a survey done from the air, which was done before we ever arrived on the property. And we did a, another one subsequently. What it shows you is that in the ground, you've got kilometers long conductive bodies. So something in there is conducting electricity. Now also before we ever arrived here, we knew that people previously had walked that ground to determine what is protruding from the surface. So you wanna find out what that conductive body is. It could be, you know, if you don't know anything, it could be iron, it could be copper, it could be something else. But in this case, those are, you know, confirmed to be graphitic bodies because when you walk the ground, because you can map the, the conductor with pretty good precision. So you know when you're on the ground, if you're above it and you look for places where the graphite protrudes the surface and you take samples of it. So, you know, like here, you've got a, uh, a grab sample. This is kind of in the middle of this map. If you can't see my cursor there, um, you see grab sample, 27.5% carbon as graphite. That's on a, a you know, a uh, conductive body that extends for probably five or six kilometers. And you've got a grab sample there of 27.5%, which is right there on the surface. You can, you can kick it. So that might be a good drill target. Now, that's not the only sample we took there. There are lots of 5s, 10s, and 15s, and, and probably some other 20s. But that's an example of how you can prospect and find that you've got a quite significant graphitic body beneath the ground there. So, you know, we just did that drill program based on the surface sampling results combined with the aerial survey that shows us where the conductivity in the ground is. And James, I have to ask uh, Stein here, um, Stein, as you've covered close to 30 graphite junior companies on your channel previously, what's your take here? Very interested to hear. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting uh, proposition that you have here because, of course, you have neurology. We know there's two enormous uh, graphite uh, resources located closely, like Tetapiska and uh, like Garrett. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation there. Uh, but they're owned by Focus Graphite, amazing graphite. So that's very interesting. I actually have a follow-up question for you, uh, James, because, of course, you're gathering these grab samples and you're doing drilling. What kind of resource are you looking at? For the viewers at home, there's two main type of resources. There are plenty of others, but these are the main categories. And there's a feiny type of resources where you're following a vein of really highly concentrated material and you have more homogeneous deposits that are more equal across the entire length what kind of resource are we looking at here champs well this the graphite is a little bit different you know like gold you often have disseminated or you have veins yeah. with graphite graphite starts out as a bed so it started out as it's carbon so it was once life forms and it accumulated on what was roughly a flat surface, you know, a long, long time ago. Uh, and it would be things like um, leaves, bushes, um, you know, pieces of a tree or dead insects. And then metamorphic events turned that carbon through pressure and extreme heat or extreme pressure and extreme heat into carbon as graphite. So it started out as a bed, flat surface but sometimes it gets moved like vertically like that and sometimes you can even get really lucky and it gets folded over like that and highly concentrates the graphite one of our target areas on the property appears to be indeed that where a, a graphite bed 
has actually been folded in half on itself, which can present a very favorable mining scenario. So, yeah, what we're talking about here is, is beds that may have been moved and are no longer horizontal, but sometimes can be vertical or even folded in half. All right, I think that's a great explanation. And then, of course, we've talked about what the company has done in the past, uh, these airborne surveys, and you have some grab samples and preliminary drill, re drill results. What is the plan for the future? What can investors expect? You know, we've got drill results pending, so that should happen within a few days. So we'll have something to report. And that should give us enough information to determine where on the property we're going to develop our, or we're going to delineate our first 43101 graphite resource. We want to get started on that in a March drill program. And as we mentioned earlier, it may have to start out as a, uh, you know, a, a modest or smaller graphite resource, but, um, you know, hopefully quite high grade. And on that, we can build, meaning do, do future financings at hopefully higher share prices in order to build on that resource. And then concurrently, bring some material to process to Volt Carbon, with whom we have the mineral processing agreement, so that they can give us samples separated by flake size that we can present to manufacturers who are ultimately going to be our consumer here. And James, is, what is the timeline on, on providing those samples uh, to automotive, to battery uh, manufacturers? Is that all going to happen in 2024? That will all happen in 2024. Um, I mean, we should be able to get them our first material in January of 2024. Now, we'll, we'll bring them more material, um, but the first material we bring them, it, it, it'll happen in January. So, And then we'll have a deliverable sample that we can provide to uh, battery anode material manufacturers.